Last year, we subjected Liam to a load of tests to find out why he wasn't, and to the best of my knowledge, still isn't good enough to be in the Tour de France. Well, this year, we've gone one step further and booked ourselves in for a lactate testing lab session at Synergy Performance, which promises to be the gold standard in finding your strengths and weaknesses as a rider. We'll be running through how the tests work and what they can tell us, why this isn't going to be the last time you hear lactate testing mentioned in the world of cycling, and finally, we'll be taking a look to see how my numbers compare to the elites and just how far I've got to go if I did indeed want to be beating Roglic at the Giro. So Luke, thanks for having us here at Synergy Performance. I'm a little bit apprehensive about how much the tests are gonna hurt, but uh, I'm interested to see what they can tell me about my cycling performance. So today, we're gonna be building a better picture of my full metabolic lactate profile, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. It sounds very interesting. But how is it gonna be better than like a VO2 max test or an FTP test like we put Liam through last year. For you today, we're mm -hmm. gonna be doing a full metabolic profile. So we're gonna be doing two tests. The first test is gonna be looking at your aerobic capabilities. We're gonna be trying to pinpoint your thresholds, um, looking at your ability to metabolize fats, which is really important for road racing. Yeah. And we're also gonna be doing a really short test where a sprint test where we're going to be trying to understand your ability to use carbohydrates that one sounds all right i don't mind it yeah <laughs> so um it's a lot easier than most people think so i'm intrigued mm -hmm. to see what you think after the test okay. um but 20 minute tests are never easy you ride as hard as you can and you're going to be completely done at the end whereas this is a little bit different yeah um, and yeah I'm interested to see what you think. So with an FTP test, I always found that when I started cycling, yes, I was probably a bit weaker, but I, I didn't know how to ride an FTP test. I didn't pace it or like, I wasn't just wasn't practiced on those efforts. So now I think not only am I stronger, but also I'm better at doing an FTP test. So that probably skews the results slightly. Is that the case here? Can I be better at lactate testing if I if I did it again. So you can't really manipulate lactate data. Mm -hmm. It kind of is, you can't hide from it. So yeah. as you said, a 20 minute test, you can get better at pacing those efforts. You could take caffeine, you could pace it diff differently. There's lots of var variables to give you that 20 minute reading. And then if you're then predicting someone's training zones based on that 20 minute effort, then yeah. you have to question how accurate is it gonna be? Um, so the idea that we're kind of understanding is how your body is responding to set exercise intensity. So as we're mm. sort of going up through the intensities and we're continuously collecting data, yeah. we're really understanding sort of how your body is responding to them. And what about for the everyday cyclist? Do you think we'll see lactate testing being useful for the everyday rider? So if you only have eight to 10 hours to train and jump off the bike, you've got to go to work the next day or, a lot of people have kids they've got to look after and you can only get five hours of training down a week, then yeah. maximizing your understanding to make sure every hour on the bike counts is surely highly beneficial. So that's kind of the angle that I'm coming at it is yes, it's great for pros, but there's a lot of empty space that I'm trying to fill in the middle ground and bring this to people who just have a passion for sport. So basically, by the end of the season, I'm going to be flying. No comment. <laughs> Before we go any further, it might be useful if I know what lactate actually is. Lactate is, is a byproduct, in a way, of metabolizing carbohydrate. Yeah. So as we're building the profile of your physiology, by measuring the volume or the concentration in a certain amount of blood, we're able to see how much carbohydrates you are supposedly banning. Okay. So in order to get rid of that lactate, it's got to be transported to your slow twitch fibers from your fast twitch fibers, mm -hmm. and it's then turned back into energy. So part of the test that we're looking at today that we focus on quite specifically is your ability to clear lactate, your ability to shuttle lactate, and that's yeah. something that was never possible with any power duration te testing and we're finding that it's 
for road racing is probably one of the, the, the main points that we want to kind of focus on post-test. Yeah. So I think it's about time we uh, got on with some testing. Yeah. Um, there's two parts to it, right? Yep. What is this first? What are we going to be doing first? The first part is basically a steady state ramp test. Yeah. Um, we're going to go up in four minute intervals and I'm going to be collecting lactate data at each step. And the idea of this part of the test is just to pinpoint your key thresholds, so the point at which you go from metabolizing fats to carbohydrate, yeah. and at which rate that happens, and then we'll continue going until I'm confident that we've reached your threshold mm -hmm. or your, your second fresh threshold we're looking for. And that, that second threshold is most closely linked to FTP. Once we've found that, we stop the test and we'll come back down to rest. We're not going to be going up in set jumps. Some people may go somewhere else and they do a like 25 watt jumps, but mm. for you as quite a competitive cyclist, if we were to go up in a 25 watt jump, we could completely miss really important markers. So I'm deciding how big those steps are live from the data I'm getting back. Yeah. Now you're back at baseline. This next test is a really short sprint effort. Um, and the idea is once that sprint is done, we're going to get straight off the bike and sit down in the chair. Okay. And the reason why we do that is lactate doesn't spike instantly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people kind of a misconception is they think they cross the line and there's obviously lots of like videos out there of people like claps across the line and people trying to get la lactate readings. Um, lactate will take a period of time to peak and a period of time to decrease or trough. Mm -hmm. So it's that that we want to measure and understand. Um, and the data we get from that can tell us a lot about how you're metabolizing or using carbohydrates as a fuel source. Um, and then obviously how you're clearing the byproduct of using that, which is lactate from the body. 10. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. It feels so weird to get off the bike, <laughs> like immediately after sprint. <laughs> right, well, that's the testing done. And obviously I'm gonna be weaker than the pros across the board, but Hopefully you'll be able to tell me what I can work on to get just a little bit closer to them. 100%. So start off with a strength of yours. When we're looking at sort of this graph here, we can clearly see as the intensity goes up, there is a point at which you start to accumulate lactate in the mm -hmm. blood. So from what we discussed earlier, if lactate is a byproduct of burning carbohydrates, we know that point at which you start to accumulate that. Everything below that, your body is prioritizing using fats. Now, the reason yeah. that's so important is cycling is an aerobic sport. The, the longer the event, the more demand there is to, to improve your fat metabolization. Yeah, so basically you can tell me at what wattage I can go out and ride and realistically ride all day. 100%, so this is what zone two is. If you're using Strava, training peaks mm -hmm. and you've input your FTP and it predicts that 50 to 60% of that is where you should do your aerobic riding, then it's basically predicting that you're metabolizing fats there and you're gaining aerobic yeah. adaptations or improved improvements. Now, is what we're able to do is pinpoint the marker which that tipping point turns. Mm -hmm. So for you, this would be your endurance ride, your three, four hours that we want to keep it below the 250 watt marker. So that is yeah. a strength for you for, for someone of your, the caliber that you're racing at and looking at where your FTP was to be metabolizing fats up until 250 watts is a real strength. So, so that shows you've got great foundation. Excellent. Whether that's <laughs> from your phenotypes and what you were born like, um, or whether that's just through your previous years of training, we can't really say, but we know that that's a strength of yours. Um, so the important thing is to now highlight potential area that you can improve. Mm -hmm. And in a race situation would be to understand your strength, to utilize that to win. The sprint test, so 
highlight a potential area to focus on. So mm -hmm. your VLA max, the basically it's your volume of lactic acid maximal. So that's what it's abbreviated to, but yeah. it's basically understanding how you use glycogen or how your glycolytic system is, how active it is, how it's uh, using glycogen as energy. Um, and we notice that that's quite suppressed, that's quite low. Um, not a bad thing. Um, and that backs up what we found with your fat metabolization to be so strong. So it's that tipping scale when mm -hmm. one's a massive strength of yours, it's hard to activate the, the, the other. But for you, I would say for the kind of racing you're looking to do, especially road and crit related stuff that are non-steady state, you may have to sprint across to a move. Yeah. It would be beneficial to activate that part of your energy system um, and potentially be a bit more active and, and have that kick at the end. Um, and the idea would be to go away and w work on that. And when you retest, keep that fat metabolization the same, mm. but improve on that VLA max, improve on that ability yeah. to use glycogen. So that VLA max, how would I go about training that? R hard work. <laughs> maximal hard efforts a bit like what we've done on the turbo mm -hmm. long rest periods between them because we want to make sure that when we're hitting those efforts that we're really fresh we yep. now know that the point that you need to drop below to be recovering and clearing and mm -hmm. we know based on how long it took to clear how long the gaps we need between those eff efforts also look at how you feel on the bike if you're not consuming enough carbohydrates when you're training, you're going to be switching your fat metabolization on. And if you're doing that, I think I don't eat enough carbs on the bike. So that's probably <laughs> a reason. Um, mm -hmm. If you're under fueling, you're going to be switching your body to be using fat. So when we're doing these really specific hard sessions, we want to be um, making sure we're carbohydrate fueling them properly. Yeah. Yeah. Many people may think that the minute you do the sprint, your lactate is instantly going to be at the highest it's going to be and it's a downward spiral from there. It's, that's not the case. Okay. Um, it can take three, five, seven minutes to reach a peak. Okay, so ages. Like, yeah. I was thinking it would be like heart rate where maybe a 30 second delay or something. No. But like that long after. Yeah, um, that's because we're isolating it. We're taking you straight off the bike, we're removing any riding, mm. we're sitting you down in the chair. Um, the time it takes to reach your peak, where that peak is, and the time it takes to come down from that peak or the trough is, that tells us a lot about your ability to clear lactate after a hard effort. Mm -hmm. um, lactate clearance, obviously you cannot really measure this with power testing. So this is an area that we focus quite heavily on. Mm -hmm. um, it's also what the research is looking at a lot of the minute and what professional cyclists are looking at a lot of the minute. So Pogacar's coach, he's really active on social media, on podcasts, and he talks a lot about how he's been testing Pogacar every three to four weeks for years. Yeah. And he's also been testing all the other world's best. And he openly said that Pogacar's lactate clearance is the reason why he is a standout athlete, obviously, He's incredibly talented. He's <laughs> across the board. Yeah, but that was the one area that stood out from the world's best. So mm -hmm. if that's not screaming that this is something that we need to potentially understand a little bit and monitor and more importantly, track. And with my lactate clearance, obviously I'm never gonna be as good as Pagacha, but unfortunately. But how can how can I improve that metric? So again, very similar to sort of those efforts where you're going above an intensity and below. Mm -hmm. So we have lactate clearance, which is the isolated sitting down in the chair. Yeah. We also have something called lactate shuttling, which is your ability to reduce lactate whilst riding. Now, mm -hmm. they're, very, they're closely linked, but that's something that doing sort of over under style efforts. So maybe going above your FTP for a minute and then coming back below, but not resting like back below just mm -hmm. maybe like 10% below for four minutes or so and repeating that. And over time, your body will teach itself that, okay, I've spiked above threshold now. I don't, I can deal with that. My lactate's not going to spike now. I can do that com comfortably. And the idea by stepping above and below is that 
We're then going to push our thresholds up. We're going to improve our clearance ability. This delay is something that I've never considered. Like when I'm out on a group ride with my mates and you race up a, a climb for a minute, let's say. And then, to be honest, once you've descended the other side, waited for whoever was off the back, then you think, well, my heart rate's back to normal, my breathing's back to normal, and I'm thinking I'm ready to go again. But obviously there's a lot of lactate in my legs. Yeah. And if I want to beat them properly, then I need to wait yeah. until that's cleared. 100%. And this is why focused aerobic riding is so important. Pinpointing that 250 marker we found for you mm -hmm. and saying that everything below that is metabolizing carbs. We also found that when you've done that effort, it took maybe five, seven, ten minutes to reach your peak. Yeah. If we know that's the case and you're on an aerobic ride and you sprint up a little hill, the next 10 minutes of your ride is basically a waste. You're yeah. not gaining the aerobic benefits of being below that 250. I'm going to tell all my mates that. <laughs> yeah. When they start sprinting on a yeah. zone two ride and they say, oh, it's only 20 seconds, so I'm going to have a go now. An analogy I tend to use is your ability to use, utilize fats, your, mm -hmm. the point at which you get your LT1. I'd almost say that that's like the size of your matchbox. Okay. Now the idea is to build a nice big matchbox. Yeah. Then your LT2, the, the metric that's closely linked to your threshold or your FTP, mm -hmm. I'd say that's the number of matches you have in your box. Yeah. And then the VLA max, your maximal glycolytic rate, your ability mm -hmm. to use gly glycogen is the length of those matches. So when you light it, you can go hard, you can attack across a move, you can sprint up a climb. Mm -hmm. The idea is to build them in the correct way. So build that engine, build your matchbox nice and big, fill it with matches, and then build those matches nice and long. Now, there's lots of ways you can do that, but the idea for you now that we've highlighted is we need to potentially fill that matchbox that you've got. It's nice and big. We need mm -hmm. to fill it with matches and make those matches long, <laughs> yep. and then you'll be all right. Well, I'd better go away and study my report and then maybe even start working on some of those weaknesses. I think it might be a while before you see me in a grand tour though. If you want to book your own lactate profiling test to get a better idea of your strengths and weaknesses on the bike, then head over to the Synergy Performance website and we'll pop a link down in the description below. If you found this content interesting, then drop us a like, subscribe to the channel to watch us do more tests like this in the future and we'll see you next time.